Today we're talking about the how of how I write a song a day. Today we're talking about process. Being creative is simple and fun When you simply concentrate on getting it done So let me show you now in my own special way How I write a song a day Hello and welcome to How I Write a Song a Day, the weekly show in which I attempt to dissect my process for your enjoyment and benefit. There are so many different ways to go about writing a song. People always ask, do you start with the lyrics first? Do you start with the chords, the melody? And I can understand the impulse to want to know this. After all, it's fascinating to me to learn about how other songwriters go about their writing. Stephen Merritt of the Magnetic Fields, one of my favorite songwriters of all time, famously writes all of his songs in little notebooks while sitting in dive bars and clubs, techno music blaring in the background or whatever. And I remember talking to one songwriter, I forget his name, who would just sit there with his guitar sitting in front of a, a blank wall to eliminate all other distraction and just sit there strumming and singing nonsense words until a melody and some kind of coherent structure started to take shape. I heard Paul Simon on NPR a while back say that he likes to get the entire backing track finished before he even starts to contemplate melody and lyrics. What's important, of course, is to figure out what works for you. Me? My process varies from day to day, but it often looks very similar to the ways I just mentioned. Sitting with an instrument and just making sounds is always a good place to start. And anytime I'm traveling and I just have my ukulele, that's pretty much the way that I do it. Then, when I'm at home and I have access to my recording gear, sometimes I like to try Paul Simon's way. That's how the song Hey Defrender was recorded. Hey Defrender, we were friends on the old Facebook. I made the entire backing track before I even started to think about the melody or the lyrics. Another way that I make a song is by building. Oftentimes when I'm taking complicated ideas and trying to transform them into a song, such as with quantum decoupling transition in a one-dimensional Feshbach resonance superfluid. Quantum decoupling transition in a one-dimensional Feshbach resonance superfluid. Quantum or what a glorious space to dwell. Age of the observable universe. It's 13.7 billion years, billion but years. it's a sphere with a radius, radius. of 46.5 billion light years. I'll record little bits of the song at a time, building it piece by piece, like this. Yet another way is that I'll make a very simple verse and chorus structure and then I'll sit and write as many verses as I possibly can. This is what happened with the end of the world dance. Animals and machines started mating wildly. Mechanized rhinoceroses to put it mildly. I literally just wanted to see how many verses I could write before I got bored with it. So once I had the verse melody, I stepped away from my computer and all of my instruments and just sat down and wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. Sometimes, and this is pretty rare for me and it mostly happens when I'm in the shower or riding my bike, a melody will come to me fully formed and all I have to do is capture it. Basically, I'd encourage you to try all these different ways and see what works for you. If you're the kind of person like Stephen Merritt who does hear melodies in your head, then sitting away from any instrument and just writing in your notebook could work. And if not, then sit down with whatever you can play and just start playing and see what comes. Fool around in GarageBand, make a backing track, and then start singing over it. There's no wrong way to write a song. It's just whatever works for you. 